In order to scan a website, you first need to add it to BurpSuite Enterprise. Adding a site's details makes it possible to take full advantage of BurpSuite Enterprise's analytics features, which enable you to track issues with your site over time. Most of BurpSuite Enterprise's data and configuration options are managed on a per site basis. Now you can add as many sites as you wish at no extra cost. BurpSuite Enterprise Edition licensing is based around the number of concurrent scans that you can run and not the number of sites added to the system. Please also note that your scanning machine must be able to access the site that you want to scan. And for more information on allowing access, please see our documentation, configuring your environment network and firewall settings. Okay, to begin with, we navigate to our sites page. And in the top right corner, we'll see the new site button. Here we can add the site details. So we want to give it a unique name. In this case, we'll just call it test. And then we can add it to one of our folders. If we leave this at the default root folder, the site is created at the top level of the site tree. Next, we can add our site scope. So firstly, this is going to be the highest level URL that we want to include in scans of this site. And all subdirectories of that URL will be scanned by default. So we can add our URL in. This is Portswigger's deliberately vulnerable test web application, which you are free to use for the purposes of your own testing. So by default, this is going to be scanned using HTTP and HTTPS, or if we were to specify a protocol in the URL, we can select scan using my specified protocol just to pick one of those. If we expand the additional options here for site scope, we'll see an option for included URLs and excluded URLs. So for included URLs, if there are URLs that are part of the same web application, but not contained under the specified site URL, we can add it here to bring it into our scope for the scan. In contrast, if there's elements of the application that we do not want to scan, we can add that to the excluded URLs list and that will be skipped during the scan. Now we can move on to our site settings. So firstly, that's gonna be our scan configuration that's used for the scans against this particular application. And we have two options here. We can use the preset scan mode designed to get you up and running as quick as possible. And this ranges from a lightweight scan, which will be completed within 15 minutes, all the way to deep, which is going to get better coverage and understanding of the site security posture, but that will take longer in terms of the scan time. If we want to create a custom configuration, we can do so and add it to our library, and that will be accessible here. There are also some built-in custom configurations that you can utilize out of the box, and this just changes the behavior of either the crawl or the audit in some way, shape or form. So perhaps we're limiting the crawl, maximizing the audit, doing something like a minimization of false positives. Um, but you can also create your own and have com com complete control over those custom options. Those are the required settings. The remaining scan settings are optional, but can be useful to get the most out of your scan. So for example, if we wanted to add authentication to our scan, we can do so here. Option one being a username and password. So if we've got quite a basic single page login mechanism, we can give it a label, add our username, add our password, and when we locate that form during the scan, we'll submit those credentials. For anything more complex, we would recommend our recorded login sequence. You can learn about how this works with the link in product to the documentation. But once you've got that set up and recorded, it'll generate a JSON file, which is a sequence of events for logging in that the crawler can follow, and you can paste that here. This is typically for anything more complex than a single form, so single sign-on or multi-page login, for example. We can also specify our extensions. Extensions are available through the Burp App Store. Once added to your enterprise installation, they'll be selectable from the list. And typically extensions will modify the behavior of the crawler in some way, shape or form. And finally, if we set up a scanning pool, which includes dedicated scanning machine resource, we can allocate that here, but by default, it will just be added to the default pool. Once we've set all our options, we can click save and our site has been created. We can then perform a pre-scan check, which will perform a connection check against the provided URL and give us a result. And also if we added a recorded login sequence, that will be replayed and checked to ensure that we've logged in okay. Now that your site has been created, you can move on 
to running your first scan. Please note that we recommend keeping a consistent scan configuration for each site that you add. Changing the scan configuration can affect vulnerability trends over time and cause BERP2 Enterprise Edition to give inaccurate time estimates when scanning. If you want to scan a site that you've already added with a new configuration, we would recommend adding the site again with the new configuration selected. Because as mentioned, we don't limit the number of sites that you create. Thank you.